We are live and I would like to welcome you to E4 Electric, your number one source for what's happening now in the world of electric cars. Today we're going to talk about some highly anticipated numbers coming out of Tesla for the Q4. They, they, we now know how many cars they sold. They mean we know all eyes are of course on Model 3. But I'm going to tell you how, how many they sold and delivered uh, last year for Q4. I'm going to talk about how what the production rate we finally know the production rate so that's exciting uh, also tesla just came up with a web-based tesla trip for those of you who are still trying or thinking about buying a tesla uh, we're going to go back to the story yesterday about the nissan leaf and a big part of the leaked information that i somehow overlooked i'm going to tell you about that as well then we're going to go back to Tesla because uh, I'm going to tell you why you should use the hold button on hold button if you're a Model 3 reservation holder who doesn't really want to convert your uh, reservation to a purchase immediately. And uh, the comment of the day actually comes from somebody who was trying to troll my channel but uh, accidentally ended up making a good point. So we're going to talk about all of that exciting stuff in the next 10 minutes and we're going to start right now. All right, all right, so let's get going with all of this exciting information that we got going on. And I'm looking in the chat, so many of you are joining from different parts of the world. Uh, George from San Diego, Isaac from New Zealand, Gary from New York, of course, Tony, the regular guy, of course, from Minneapolis, Tesla P85D from Lithuania. Welcome all of you guys from around the world. If you are new here, by the way, uh, feel free to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you become a part of this amazing community as you can see in the chat room. All right, so let's get going. The Q4 results uh, are, are in, mainly delivery results. And uh, there's some really good news and some bad news. Of course, no one's talking about the bad news, but I'm going to have to tell you about it anyway. Sorry for those of you who are just never like to hear bad Tesla news. I'm going to have to do it to you, but I'll do it a little bit later. We're going to start with some good news. So first of all, record deliveries for Tesla, not just for the quarter, uh, about 30,000 cars delivers, uh, delivered in Q4. That's a record but also over 100,000 cars delivered in uh, the entire year of 2017. So really, really good numbers. This is more than Tesla actually promised to the investors. So this is definitely really good for the, for the Q4. 30,000 cars delivered, I believe fifth, around 15,000 of them are Model S, uh, 13,000 of them are Model X and 1550 of them uh, Model 3. Now those are deliveries, I believe there's about 860 or so in transit, but total Tesla made about 2500 uh, Model 3s in 2017. This is pretty much what I kind of predicted. I know that I want to take a credit for a prediction, but that's what it kind of felt like at the end of the year. So that is all good news. Of course, instead, we, we, we were promised in the beginning that uh, Model 3 production would be about 20,000 per month right now. We just ended up with 2,500. Uh, for the entire quarter three and quarter four. Now, this has kind of been expected and these are just good numbers, guys. You know, just, you know, a, a lot of people were speculating that, hey, listen, maybe because, you know, there are Model 3s now in production, people won't be buying my Model S. Well, guess what? 15,000 sold and, and, and I think they even actually decreased the production a little bit to get some resources to the Model 3 just for that quarter. So that's really, really good. So, uh, of course, record numbers are always good uh, uh, no matter what. Um, but here's some bad news also. You know, as I just mentioned, the Elon promised 20,000 uh, Model 3s made per month back in July. That's obviously didn't happen. Then when he updated he, the, the numbers uh, at the last conference call with investors, he said they're going to reach that rate uh, by uh, the Q Q1, which is at the end of March. Well, guess what? Now they're pushing it three more months. And I believe it's going to be the end of June, which is uh, at the end of Q2. You know, that's a big deal. I mean, that's pushing it once again by three more months. They are saying that at the end of Q1, they will be producing half of that 2,500 Model 3s per week. Uh, but nevertheless, now the stock didn't really move that much today, at least at the time when I'm doing the show. So it looks like investors are kind of, uh, you know, believe that they kind of broke even with all the news. Uh, but that also means for those of uh, you guys who have uh, all of us, really, guys, uh, who have Model 3 reservations, uh, 
that are going to be coming up uh, very soon. That means that because they're going to keep selling Model 3 uh, assets and Model Xs, uh, but the Model 3 production will still be slower than expected, a lot of people won't get to use the $7,500 federal uh, tax credit here in the United States. So it's kind of bad news for everybody, really, with the production, with the Model 3 production being delayed once again. But they did say that now the production at this point, at the last week, of 2017 has reached a thousand model threes per week that's something that's actually pretty i mean that's four thousand cars per month still pretty good and obviously they're going to be increasing it uh with every week so overall good news uh um for tesla not such good news for model three reservation holders and and maybe for some sales moving forward uh but it is what it is. I just want to make sure that you kind of we knew the all the good and all the uh, uh, bad. However, I, I all the articles I've been reading today, not not, not everybody uh, wants to be talking about the production being uh, pushed once again. So that's that. Um, it, it, it's a bit unfortunate, but this is what we kind of have to live with. By the way, uh, for those of you like myself uh, who now I can configure my Model Three. However, I'm waiting one for the standard range Model Three. And two for the lease option, which is not going to be coming up until later this year. And uh, apparently, as I was talking to my uh, a sales rep, um, you can actually put your reservation on hold. And this is what it looks like. If you're actually going to go to the manage of your Model 3 in your, um, in your uh, web uh, uh, portal, uh, you should be able to say configure. And I was kind of sounds scary. Design your Model 3. Well, I'm not ready. Okay. Well, if you go there, this is what you see. And you can see, okay, you can start designing right now. But as you can see, this great button over here that means you can put your reservation on hold it does two things once one it gets uh, rid of all the emails and phone calls that tesla has been sending me for sure asking me when i'm ready to configure my model 3 so that's pretty good but most importantly you will get to choose which options you're waiting for so for example for me it's going to be the standard range in the lease option you can click on that and it will start bothering you until those options are available and they will email it to you. So if you're ready to configure at that point in time, you will be pretty much the first one to know. So um, that's pretty good. Um, Derek in the chat room says, did a Tesla reach 200,000 in 2017? No, they have not. They're not really that close yet, but they will probably be reaching it in Q2. So that that's what, that's what it looks like right now, because don't forget, it's not 200,000 in the entire world. It's 200,000 in the United States because the tax credit is for the United States. Um, by the way, let me uh, let me just remind you for one second that this uh, channel and this video is sponsored by Evanex, the aftermarket accessories for Tesla. Discount code is in the description of this video. All right, let me go back to another story uh, about the new news, new new new. Nissan Leaf, as I call it, because of the some information got leaked about the uh, updated version that they're coming up for 2019. And I was all excited about the 225 mile range that they've announced. I kind of overlooked uh, the, the leaked specs that did announce that they're planning on having the active thermal management system. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is the system that's responsible for uh, uh, keeping the temperature of the battery to the one that doesn't uh, doesn't contribute to degradation of the battery. So uh, that's a big deal. They had that problem in the previous version of the Nissan Leaf. They came up, we, they didn't do anything about it in this version and got a lot of criticism, including me, one of the biggest disappointment of the year, if you ask me. And now they're finally getting their craft together and it looks like they will come up with an active uh, uh, thermal management system. Though I'm wondering what it's going to do for the sales of 2018 new Nissan Leaf because a lot of people have jumped, jumped on this and they have what over 10,000 reservations for that just in Europe and now the sales are open here in the United States I wonder if people will back out of it because you know a, a longer range in a, a, a active thermal management system is a big deal so that's um, I'm wondering if that's going to make a big difference um, uh, Tony in the chat room says, if not for the size of the Model 3, I would totally buy one. I've always driven a larger luxury car, so I'm going to be a Model S owner. Actually, Tony, I feel exactly the same way, though. I'll probably buy, uh, my girlfriend will probably buy a Model 3 in September, because right now we have two. So um, we, we'll see what happens with that. All right, let's move, move on to another story, which is a Tesla uh, trip planner. Now, as you know, if you have a Tesla right now and you need to plan a trip, you just put it in your navigation system and will calculate the route, including which superchargers you need to stop by to charge. Uh, you'll see how many uh, stalls are available and how much time you're going to need for charging and so forth. So it's pretty cool. But 
It was only available to us, the Tesla drivers. Now, a lot of people who are thinking about buying that Tesla are worried about something like this, and they really had no way of telling, you know, whatever their favorite, whatever their uh, needed trips that they have, um, how much time it would take, you know, how would this would work. So I think uh, uh, Tesla you know, finally uh, made a, a good move and they uh, ended up actually coming up with an online version of this trip. This is what it looks like. I believe you go to tesla.com slash trip. Uh, you, don't, uh, you don't have to be logged in or anything like that. You can put your current a current location and your destination. We'll map it out just like that. Uh, we'll tell you which superchargers to start uh, to stop at and how much time it's gonna take. In my case, I just mapped it from San Jose, California to Los Angeles. And and guess what? It just needs to uh, have me to stop by the Kettleman City, one of the largest superchargers in America for 45 minutes and off I go all the way to Los Angeles. So um, I think that's pretty good. And for those of you guys who just want to plan it at home without getting into your car, um, it's also a, a, a great way to do it. Tony in the chat room says, Alex, will you do a short video on the navigation upgrade whenever Tesla releases it? Of course I will. I, this is something that I'm uh, waiting for though. I got to tell you guys, I've been dying to do the previews of the CES. Um, and we really only have two more days until I depart for Vegas to cover that for you. So I really, unless there will be major news, um, I will be dedicating a lot of my time to the preview of what I'm expecting or what you guys should expect at the Consumer Electronics uh, Show uh, next week in Vegas. I will be there myself. I will do some live shows and I will cover it for you. So if you, have, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, this is the best time because I believe I'll be one of the few um, Tesla related or electric car related YouTubers who are actually going to be there covering it. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that. Um, quick reminder, if you want to support all of this uh, community, my channel, uh, you can do so at the Patreon page. I expect to release more behind the scene and exclusive interviews and footage from the CES there. I just like I've been doing that my Patreons get some exclusive footage uh, uh, and that they seem to enjoy and I enjoy doing it for them. Uh, you can, uh, the link is of course is in the description of uh, this video. And by the way, another link in the description of this video, as you can see, I wear sometimes a uh, funny electric car related t-shirts and you can have, uh, you, you can see the link there to those sh shirts that I've uh, designed myself. And yes, Tony in the chat room is one of my Patreons. Thank you so much, Tony. And thank you to all of the Patreons who have participated and uh, contributed. All right, comment of the day. And this one is a good one because this comes from somebody who was really trying to troll me, as I mentioned to you guys, and um, accidentally made a good point. And this is something that we need to address. Now, his name is Charles. You can see his a um, long message here and I'm you know I mean a lot of it is just trolling but there are a couple of good points that I'm going to mention to you guys and this is something that a lot of naysayers right now still you know give us a hard time and they're not necessarily wrong so he says that um uh, the, you know, he was talking about the fact that uh, a large portion of electric, electrical charging power in the United States come from the, co comes from the combustion of fossil fuels, which is true. And also he's talking about the fact that uh, the lithium production and the supply in the world is not unlimited. And, you know, the, in order for everybody to drive an electric car, we're going to really max out the lithium supplies uh, in the world. Now, first of all, uh, let me tell you, all the trolling aside, uh, he's right. There are a couple of things that, you know, are still not there. But don't forget, and this is, this is I think, the point that non-sayers don't quite understand. This electric car revolution is not going to, to happen overnight. You can't just convert everything into electric cars and electric green energy. You have to start somewhere. Now, where Tesla and electric car movement has started is with creating a consumer product that's so much better than the gas-powered cars that people just want to have it. Now, that's the first step, right? If there is no consumers, none of the rest of the industries are not going to follow. So that's number one step. And this is why I've always praised Tesla is because they've done something that no governments, no, no uh, uh, organizations could done in the past. They've created a product that people are excited about. So that's number one, right? So we started there. Now, secondly, don't forget that this community, including Tesla, including a lot of other companies, have now created products for you to not be able to 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 be able to produce your own power and store it right with Tesla uh, solar roof and or solar panels and a Tesla power wall you can create your own power you can store it and you can charge your car so that's how we now starting to convert ourselves 
from the uh, uh, you know gas powered uh, or of uh, coal powered plants to the green energy and of course like for example where i live and there are a lot of places like this where i have a choice of buying the regular power or paying just a little bit more probably not for too long and buying a green energy and which what which which what i do now so Consumer product first, the infrastructure second, and then the rest of them will be converted. For example, yes, you're right that right now, for example, all the trucks that deliver stuff to the factory here in Freeman and the factory itself, it all runs on oil. And that's correct. But you know what? Someone's going to come up with a semi truck. Well, I guess who that, who that was. Then they're going to have to use those trucks for themselves or for the other companies who deliver stuff for them they have to convert their factory at some point to solar power and you know the gigafactory is already doing that and then little by little by little so all of these naysayers are really you know even though they're correct but they don't understand or they don't want to understand that listen it takes time this is a major disruption of the industries that have been here for really centuries in some cases, well at least a century so you can't just do it overnight you have to do it little by little and let's 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 be honest there's only been what less than a decade of, of electric cars and definitely Tesla only came in for real in the market in 2013. So we're talking about really five years and the progress is amazing. So if you're naysayer, you know, this is this is my message to you guys that this is not going to happen overnight. You have to uh, go baby steps, but these baby steps are still pretty big steps because we've accomplished a lot in the last five uh, years. And by the way, guys, you know, and, and this is why I also want to make sure that don't forget, we're a small community right now, right? We need to make sure that we do not get mad at people like uh, 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 Charles. We educate them, right? We, we let's let's not fight with them. Let's let's try to bring them over because our cookies are very delicious, okay? And we got them. So let's let's make sure that they taste it. Let's sure they. We give them free samples, whatever analogy you want to use it. Uh, and, and so they understand that our stuff is just better. And sooner or later, they will start seeing the light and they will hopefully join it. And it's our job. It's our responsibility as a, the early adopters of this new technology, of these new industries, is to educate them and bring them on board, not by fighting with them, but welcoming their comments, listening to their concerns and giving them the facts and giving them the plan that we have for the electric car movement. Um, now, uh, back to the Model 3, actually, uh, just so we are clear, because there's some questions here. Donald in the chat room, by the way, first time poster from what I see. Uh, uh, thank you, Donald. By the way, guys, you the chat has been going so fast lately that I can't answer every single uh, uh, um, uh, question or comment. So I apologize for that. It looks like that's what's just been happening lately but let me um let me find that comment oh uh, donald says am i correct that the model 3 long range battery is 75 kilowatt battery i believe you're right you know what i'm not really uh, people in the chat room please jump in on if you're watching the replay please jump in and answer it i do believe it's 75k now i believe tesla has not really officially released the information but uh it is uh it is something that uh, uh very close to that it looks like and by the way yeah let me address the one more thing that charles mentioned is the uh, lithium batteries and um betty in the chat room correct correct lithium batteries are probably not going to last so we don't have to worry about the supplies uh graphene batteries is probably the future uh solid state batteries is a, a, a super capacitors is the future so i don't think we're going to uh worry about the lithium supply for too long and that's why i kind of wanted to dismiss that part of charles uh comments and uh, Tesla P85 says uh, in, the in the chat room says yes, it is 75 kilowatt hour to answer Donald's question. Um, Hazard in the Hazard Hazard in the uh, chat room says many states in the U.S. require you to be connected to the grid even if you can't generate enough renewable energy to be yes that's true. Uh, a lot of times you can have a completely self-sufficient system, but you still uh, require to be connected to the grid, and that's fine because you know a lot of times you end up selling that electricity to them. But at the same time, if something goes wrong with your, you know, uh, uh, panels or something goes wrong with your battery, you still have a backup uh, system from the actual grid. So that's not bad of idea anyway. So that's um, uh, that's that's uh, that's what I that's that's a good thing, really, for you guys and for all of us, I think. Um, all right. So um, let's see. I, I Guys, this is a lot of good news. This is good news for Model 3. This is good news for Tesla and electric cars. I'm definitely excited about what's happening this year. And so should you. There's going to be exciting year. I am going to kind of switch my mind to the CES. I'm going to be talking about, you know, Biden uh, uh, unveiling, the Fisker unveiling. Mercedes-Benz is going to have their uh, user experience booth there. So I just kind of wanted to preview. Um, and so if you guys are interested in something in particular, definitely email me on 
posted here in the comment section of this video if you're watching in the replay and let me know what it is that you're interested in i already have a poll just like that in my facebook group for the tesla model 3s uh, owners so please go ahead and participate so i know what it is that you want me to do reports on um, and i will cover that for you when i am there next week so uh yeah that's uh that's pretty much it for today i will see you guys tomorrow at 11 a.m pacific time uh, uh stay tuned and of course remember to stay charged